Hey guys, Real Touch GML here, also known as Zach on CodingMadeSimple.com. And welcome to the first installment, or as you could call them, units of my Java's Wizard Game course. So I'm gonna be uploading two of these a week and you can learn as you go. I also have the entire course already put up and hosted on CodingMadeSimple.com. Check out the link in the description. You can go there, you can enroll for completely free and start learning at your own pace. So if you don't want to do that, everything will still be available on YouTube. Uh, what I do have on Coding Made Simple though, are all of the downloads for the sprite sheet that we're going to be using and the actual source code for our project. So what we're building right now is what you're seeing on the screen. I hope you enjoy. I really put a lot of time into this and I really think you're going to learn a lot, especially if you're even a beginner Java programmer. I use a lot of simplistic methods in this course. You don't need to be very detailed in how, com how computers actually work with programming. Uh, it's really surface level type of stuff. So we're going to be creating collisions, we're going to be creating different levels, we're going to be creating enemies in our game, all of that sort of stuff. All right, so go ahead and enjoy the first unit here and I'll see you guys soon. Hi, it's Zach here and welcome to the first unit of our Wizards Game Java course. And now in this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to create our game project and we're going to create all of the framework behind what our game is going to be. So before we can start adding in all of the juicy sort of effects of, you know, like let's say animations, textures, let's build in levels, let's build enemies, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to create the framework behind it. So the game loop, starting up threads, uh, getting even a window on our screen, right? These are essentially the main things we need to do before we can really dive into it. So this course has also included a Java Clown Course ebook. And in that ebook, what we're doing is we're setting up all of the framework here. So if you don't understand the framework or if you don't get some of the uh, different variables or, or something that we use, I have a lot of the definitions for that in the ebook that can be downloaded on this page right below. So let's go ahead and begin. So I am in Java Eclipse. Also, the ebook shows you how to install Java. I'm not going to do that here, uh, but you can also look online and different things like that to just install Java. And what I'm going to be using is Eclipse. Now, you can use NetBeans, you can use anything you really want uh, as an IDE, but uh, I'm going to use Eclipse just so it's easier. But whatever you use, even if it's Notepad, all of the code is going to be the same still. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new Java project. And I'm just going to call it Wizard Game. And here we have our source folder and our JRE system library. So that's just our Java SE 1.8 edition. So that's just everything that we use with uh, Java. So any sort of functions, classes, uh, different things like that. Then um, it gets taken from that JRE system library. So our source folder is where all of our different class files are going to be located and uh, that's where we can sort of navigate the code and um, do all that stuff, right? So I'm going to go ahead and right click and create a new class and I'm going to name this window and we're just going to be using the default package there. And I'm going to right click on our default package and make another class and call it game. All right, so now right off the bat, we have two classes, window and game. So here is what the window class is for. The window class is going to be just a class that we call right off the bat to create our game window. Very simple. Now our game class, this is going to be our main class. This is where everything gets called. This is where our game loop is going to be. This is where everything's going to happen. So from here, from the game class, the game class might uh, it's going to handle all of like the updating for X and Y positions for our characters in the game. It's going to handle all of the rendering, so all of the uh, you know drawing, the graphics, and things like that. This is the game class uh, is going to be handling all of that. So let's go ahead and in our game class, I'm going to create the main method in Java. So public static void main string args and in here I'm just going to call a new game and what that's going to do is going to set us right up to our constructor 
So new game creates a new instance of our game and it's going to call our constructor. And in that constructor, we're going to call our new window, right? So here, let's go ahead and create the code to make that window. So since we're going to call a new window, we're going to create the constructor for our window. And we're going to put in some arguments. So our width, height, we'll do the title. And then we're also going to want to add in our game, our actual game class here. Because when we create what's called a JFrame, we're going to be adding that game class into our JFrame. All right, so here, let's create a new JFrame. Frame equals new JFrame. And inside here, we can say title. Control Shift O to import the JFrame, or what you can do is you can just hover over it and then click import. Now here, what we can do is set up the dimensions of our frame or our window. So I'm going to say frame dot set preferred size, and I'm going to create a new dimension of our width and height. And Control Shift O to import dimension. I'm going to copy and paste this two more times, and instead of preferred, I'm going to say maximum and minimum. And that's just setting up how big our window is going to be. All right, so now down here I can say frame.add, and we're going to, uh, nope, just add. And here we're going to put in our game. I'm also going to say frame dot set resizable to false. Frame dot set default close operation. Jframe dot exit on close. Frame dot set location relative to. I'm going to say null. And frame dot set visible true. We're getting an error here, and that's because our actual game class, what it needs to do is extends canvas and implements runnable. And we're getting an error here because we need to add in our run method, which is where our game loop is going to be stored. Oops. Let's go ahead and write that out. Public void run. So now we're not getting an error there. So I'll go ahead and go through this code real quick so you can understand it completely. So we're calling the constructor of our window because in our game class, we're just going to make a new instance of the window. And whenever you make a new instance of a class, it's always going to call this constructor. It's like the create event. So here we are creating our JFrame. We're naming it frame, putting in the title that are, that's in our arguments here. We're setting the size of our frame. We're adding in our game class to the frame because it uses this canvas. Java works together with JFrame and Canvas. Resizable is false, meaning you cannot resize the window. Set default close operation, JFrame.exit on close. We set our location relative to null, meaning that when we start the game, our box is going to start in the very center of our window. And then frame.set visible to true. That's just essentially um, letting us see the window. So in our constructor of our game class, I'm going to call it new window. Our width is going to be 1,000. Our height is going to be 563. The title is going to say wizard game. And we're going to say this. Now those are the arguments we put in here that we're now using. And I'll just add a serial ID here so it doesn't give me a warning. So now if we run the game, as you can see on my other window here, we have our Wizards game. Awesome. So now we have the window. But now what we need to do is create what's called a thread, which is going to run simultaneously with our actual program. So when we start up this thread, what it's going to do is call our run method, 
just because that's what Runnable does in our uh, in our JRE system library. When we start a thread, it always calls this run method, and that's why our game loop is going to be in this run method. Now our game loop will cycle through and update our game every time, uh, 60 times uh, a second, and then we'll also it'll render out our game at a couple thousand FPS. All right, so that's the whole idea of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple variables up here. I'm going to create a private boolean is running, and it's going to equal false. I'm also going to create a private thread, and I'm going to name it thread. So here, I'm going to create a new method, private void start, and private void stop. And these are just going to be the methods that are going to start and stop our thread. All right, so in our constructor, right under that, I'm going to call our start method. And here, I'm going to say is running equals true, thread equals new thread, this, thread.start. And when we say this, that's because we are calling this method's run method or this class's run method. All right. So now in the stop, we're going to say is running equals false. And we're going to say thread.join. And instead of thread.stop, it's thread.join. And we need to throw a try and catch because it can fail to do that. All right. And that's all we need to do there. What I'm going to show you here is going to be down below. This is going to be the actual game loop of our program. So I'm just going to copy and paste this now. If you go into the ebook, you can get a little bit more of a detailed explanation on this. This right here was taken from Notch, the developer of Minecraft. Uh, this is the guy that made this game loop. And uh, I've had no problems with this game loop. This game loop is run perfectly and it's everything I, any game I make, I will use this game loop now with Java because it is just so perfect for what we need. So this is going to be in the bottom of this video, so you can go ahead and copy and paste it into yours. And then if you want a more detailed description, go ahead and download that ebook that came with this, and you can um, uh, look further more into it. Okay, but for now, what I'm going to do is just copy and paste this in, and I'm going to create two more methods, public void tick, and public void render. get rid of this stuff too so now what's gonna happen here is that if I run the game we see nothing's changed here but what's happening is it's actually creating um, uh, it's updating our window 60 times a second and it's giving our FPS uh, or it's updating the render method uh, a couple thousand times per second okay so now what we need to do is create the ability to use what's called our graphics class, which is what Java creates that uh, essentially we can use this graphics class and to draw anything. So we can draw rectangles, we can um, draw images that we load, uh, we can do anything really. So what I'm going to do is in our render method, because that's what our render method's for, uh, essentially with the game class, our render method is going to render everything in our game and the tick method is going to update everything in our game. Again, we want to make these two separate methods because the tick method gets updated 60 times a second and the render method gets updated a couple thousand times a second. All right. So in our render method, I'm going to create what's called a buffer strategy. I'm going to name it BS. And this is going to equal this dot get buffer strategy. I'll explain a little bit more on this. I'm going to say if bs equals null, then we're going to say this dot create buffer strategy at three, and then return. So essentially, what's happening here is our buffer strategy, is, when we create it to begin with, it becomes null. So now we check if bs equals null, then we're going to create this buffer strategy with three arguments. 
again, I explained this a little bit more in the ebook. And the ebook really covers everything we're covering here, except when we actually go into creating a game. So that it covers creating the actual engine itself, right? The the framework behind it. So this dot create buffer strategy three is essentially preloading frames behind the actual window. If you can kind of visualize that a little bit, it's preloading these frames so it's already loaded to go into the next frame. So it's not not each frame is being loaded while it's being shown. It's already being it's already loaded. So when it's being shown, when you see one frame being shown, it's already got two more behind it, I guess in the queue, that's already loaded and ready to show. So I mean essentially what you could do is make this let's say 30 and it will load 30 frames before it shows that. But now what 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 we've noticed with that is that it doesn't really affect anything. In fact, it kind of slows things down because you can't really notice anything after 3 being choppy. I mean, it still it all looks the same. So 30 looks the same as 3 and it's the best uh, per use of performance wise to use three all right so now here what I can say is graphics G equals BS dot get draw graphics and then when I'm going to control shift O to do that and then we just do G dot dispose and BS dot show so I'm gonna go ahead and comment right here Anything between these lines here is where we can actually draw things to our game. So if we run the game, you can see we get nothing still. But now we can start drawing stuff. So if I say g.setColor, color.red, and I say g.fillRect00 zero zero with 1000, height 563, and I run the game, we now have a red background, which is really, really cool. So that's going to be it for this course. Go ahead and rewatch it. Learn everything there is to know about this. And then on the next unit, what we're going to do is look into creating game objects and how these game objects can work within our game so we can make it as efficient as possible.